Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be talking about electron donating and electron withdrawing groups. So electron donating groups are going to be the activators and electron withdrawing groups are going to be your deactivators. And I'll talk about electron withdrawing groups in a minute. So in electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions, the benzene ring act as your nucleophile. So if you attach an electron donating group on the ring, then it makes that ring even more concentrated with electrons as a result it's going to act as in a better nucleophile, and you have activated the ring in that particular case. So you want to make sure you know the summary or you want to know the ranges. Uh, you want to make sure you know what groups falls in the category of electron donating groups and what groups are electron withdrawing groups. And even among the electron donating groups, some of them are going to be stronger electron donating groups, and you can call those strong activators, and some of them are going to be weak electron donating groups and they're going to be weak activators. So in, in here, I have placed these groups in the order of decreasing nature of electron as an electron donating group. So on the top, this is going to be your, uh, the strong. So on the top, this is going to be your strongest electron donating group. And on the bottom right here, it's going to be the weakest electron donating group. And hydrogen, obviously, is going to be a reference. So remember why hydrogen is a reference. So suppose if you have an aromatic ring. So I'll just go and draw the aromatic here. So in an aromatic ring, uh, we're talking about something attached to the aromatic ring. So if you have a hydrogen attached to it, obviously, you know, we have six hydrogens all around. But if I take this as a reference, uh, we have hydrogen attached to it, then it's not an activator or a deactivator, just in a reference. But then if you replace this hydrogen with any of those groups that have drawn above, then you actually activate the, activating the rings because all of them are electron donating groups. But then also keep in mind that you have a list of strongest and then you have some weakest electron donating groups. So you, you want to make sure you have these memorized. So these guys, so I'm just going to go ahead and circle that. So this is going to be your electron donating groups and hydrogen is a reference and I'll talk about the ortho pair director in a minute but before I talk about that I want to talk about electron withdrawing groups so on the list on the bottom here I have electron withdrawing groups and that starts with weak electron withdrawing groups or another way of saying these are going to be the weakest on the top and then your strongest electron withdrawing groups are going to be something like uh, NR3 group plus or NH3 plus or NH2 groups so these are going to be your strongest electron withdrawing group. So what electron withdrawing group is really going to do to the ring is they're going to pull out the electrons from the ring, making the ring electron deficient. And if the ring is electron deficient, it may not be, it's not going to be able to act as a good nucleophile in that case. As a result, these guys are also called deactivators because they deactivate the rings toward electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions. So all these guys right here are going to be your electron withdrawing groups. And remember, uh, fluorine or halogens are going to be the weakest, followed by the other guys. So halogens are electron withdrawing because of the inductive effect, because they are electronegative. And then uh, some of the other guys are going to have the resonances, except with the CF3. And you can also have something like CCL3 as well, also falling in the category of electron withdrawing group, just because you have a carbon, but then you have a bunch of electronegative elements attached to it. Now, I have talked about how a particular um, an activator or an electron donating group is going to be an ortho pair director in a separate video and how an electron withdrawing group is going to be an, a meta director. So in this particular case, obviously I'm not including the reference, but your ortho and para directors are going to be all the activators, including your halogens. So remember, even though your halogens fall in the category of electron withdrawing groups, or I, I would say mild electron withdrawing groups, but they are still going to be ortho and para director. Now, why halogens kind of falls in that category? We know that halogens are, halogens are electron withdrawing groups through the inductive effect because they are more electronegative, but then also halogens has a bunch of electrons on them, so they can be 
donating those electrons into the ring, making the ring a little bit more reactive toward the electrophilic aromatic substitution. And as a result, they follow um, ortho and para substitutions. And uh, obviously, they're not going to be as reactive as having an actual electron donating groups, but still. Keep in mind your halogens are electron withdrawing groups because of the inductive effect because they're electronegative, but they still do ortho and para substitutions because of the resonance effect. Uh, so I'm just saying because of resonance. Okay, and then the rest of these guys, all the other electron withdrawing groups are going to be your uh, meta directors because uh, you have some mild to strong. So these uh, carbonyls are going to be our mild and then uh, the rest of these guys are relatively strong. If I go back and look uh, these guys right here and I'm going to go ahead and maybe highlight those, not that one. Just these guys and then also having the carbonyls here as well. So you can kind of see I do have ester groups on both of those and what really makes them in a meta or electron withdrawing and what really makes them electron donating is the way they're going to be attached to the ring. So if I have a ring, and I'll just copy this down, if I have a ring right here and if and uh, to that ring, if I got the oxygen of the ester group attached to it, then that makes it an electron donating group and that's going to be an ortho and para director but on the other hand and i can say the same thing with the amide in that case the nitrogen of the amide would be attached directly to the ring and that makes an electron donating group but if i talk about when the same group ester and amide could be an electron withdrawing group well i all i really got to do is just make sure i have the carbonyl carbon directly attached to the ring so anytime you have a carbonyl carbon directly attached to the ring, that's going to be an electron withdrawing group. And whether that's an aldehyde or ketone or ester, acid or acid chloride, they're all going to be electron withdrawing in that particular case. So based on the nature of electron donating or electron withdrawing groups, you can tell whether a given ring is going to be activated or deactivated. The activated rings react faster when it comes to electrophilic aromatic substitutions and the deactivated rings react slower. So sometimes they do ask you those questions to figure out which ones are going to be uh, fastest to slowest toward the EAS reaction. So I have this example set up here. And let's see if you guys can figure out if you guys can figure out which one what's going to be the reactivity order. So I'm going to be calling a one to be the fastest and six to be the slowest in this particular case. So it might be a good idea if you can pause the session and do this on your own and see if you got the right answer. So suppose, um, so suppose um, I suppose that you did pause the session and did this on your own. Now what I'm looking at here is obviously B is going to be the very first one I'm going to be looking at because B has just the hydrogen. So this is your reference. All right. So this is going to be in the middle of electron donating and electron withdrawing groups. So let's say what's going on with the rest of these guys. So figure out which groups are your electron donating groups and which groups are your electron withdrawing groups. So methyl groups on C is going to be your electron donating group. And then D, you have a carbonyl carbon directly attached to the ring. And this is uh, especially in function group aldehyde. So this is going to be electron withdrawing group. And then you have this E, OH, alcohols are electron donating groups as well. So, so far, we're good. And then F, now we have an ester, but in this ester, the oxygen is directly attached to the ring, not the carbonyl carbons. As a result, this is going to be an electron donating group as well. And nitro group on A is obviously going to be your electron withdrawing group. So make sure you memorize your electron donating, electron withdrawing groups. It's not just going to help you here, but also going to help you with those uh, uh, medical exams, especially MCAT and all that. Now, the electron donating groups are obviously going to be your uh, activators. So ring C, I'd say, and then I have E. And then I got F. Those are going to be your most reactive out of the rest of them. But among C, E, and F, which one is going to be the most reactive? Now I got to figure out 
who is the most activated group or who is the strongest electron donating groups. So that's why I said even in the list of electron donating groups, there are some stronger and there are some weaker. So in that list, I know the OH is going to be the strongest here. So E is going to be number one in that particular case, followed by between C and F. Uh, in F, you have ester attached. That's going to be your mild electron donating group, but then your CH3s are weak electron donating groups. So followed by F, have a relatively stronger electron donating group. So that's going to be number two. And then you have three on C. And then remember, between A and D, those are your deactivated rings, so they are going to be even slower in reaction toward EAS than B, because B is your, just your reference. Like I said, it's going to be in between electron donating and electron withdrawing groups. So after three, you get four here. And then between A and D, I got to figure out who is a stronger electron withdrawing group. So stronger electron withdrawing group will deactivate the ring the most. Now, between the NO2 group and this carbonyl, carbonyls are weak electron withdrawing groups or weak deactivators. And these are your microgroups or your strong. So as a result, the nitro group is going to be the slowest to react. So that's going to be six here. And then this D is going to be five. So this is how you figure out what's going to be the order toward the reaction of EAS for these aromatics when they have different substituents attached on the ring. All right, if you have any questions, feel free to leave any comments in the section below.